off the face of the earth, man would only have four years left to live. That line is usually attributed to Einstein. Now, he may not have said it, but it might be true. 90% of the world's major crops are pollinated with the help of bees. Without bees to act as pollinators, our crops cannot survive naturally. Believe it or not, you have a bee to thank for one in every three bites of food you eat. But we have a problem, a big problem. Right now, bees are dying in massive numbers. Just over the past decade, one third of the UK's bee population has disappeared, and 24% of Europe's bees are now threatened with extinction. Why is the bee population declining in such great numbers? Well, a variety of factors are at play, such as pesticides, drought, habitat destruction, nutrition deficit, air pollution, global warming, and more. In other words, it's all our fault. Big chemical companies are manufacturing chemical pesticides and herbicides to protect our crops from insects and pests. But these same chemicals, which are supposed to protect our crops, are destroying bees. Which, ironically enough, could spell the doom of the plants these substances are supposed to protect. Of particular concern is a class of pesticides called neonicotinoids, or neonics. The EU recently extended its ban on the agricultural use of neonics in acknowledgement of the harm they cause to bees. This ban could save bees in Europe, however, the same chemicals are still found in common garden pesticides. So, those of you with home gardens may want to take a closer look at the chemicals in your pesticides. Another major factor threatening honeybees is the Varroa mite, or Varroa destructor. This very small round mite is a terror for honeybees, and it can destroy entire colonies if left alone. A Varroa mite outbreak can not only have devastating economic impacts for beekeepers, it can also result in colony collapse disorder, or CCD. With CCD, a majority of worker bees in a colony suddenly die overnight, leaving behind the queen and essentially collapsing or breaking up the colony. Scientists may have found a way to counter some threats bees face. A mushroom extract fed to honeybees greatly reduces the levels in killer viruses in bees. In field trials, colonies fed mycelium extract from amdu and reishi fungi showed a 79-fold reduction in deformed wing virus and a 45,000-fold reduction in Lake Sinai virus compared to control colonies. Researchers hope that these extracts may help cure bees from multiple viruses. There are a lot of things that you can do individually to help save the world's bees, and you don't have to be a beekeeper to do them. If you want to do your bit for saving bees, you could start by destroying your lawn. You see, yards covered with pristine green grass are bad news for wild bees. They want to live among wild plants with lots of flowers, so a well-manicured lawn is like a barren, dry desert to them. Bees need to eat, so fill your garden with flowering plants that are rich in pollen and nectar. Do not use any pesticides, fungicides, or herbicides on plants or in your garden. Plants get contaminated and the product will likely reach the bees and kill them. And make sure the plants that you are buying are not pre-treated with neonicotinoid pesticides. Commit to supporting local bee colonies by purchasing honey directly from your local beekeepers. Time is running out for bee populations and the safety and security of the world's food supply relies on our ability to find means to improve pollinator health.